you creatures of the night, and this is the latest mini episode edition in our podcast. It records. As always, I am Matt Johnson with I'm my beautiful. I was, I was a segue to you. I was going to give you some compliments. <laughs> this is my with my beautiful, um, always pleasant and conversational co-host, Peter Hansen. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I did not expect that warm welcome. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was trying, I'm in a good mood. I was going to build it up, you know, just to really let the audience know who you are as a person. I mean, they hear you over the airwaves, but they don't they don't get to see you as much as I do. And I, they got they just got to know. <laughs> well, thank <Yeah>. you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Pete. Well, this week, everybody, mini episode. We'll try to keep it try to keep it short. The last one we did, if you listen, ran uh, well over well over a normal episode <laughs> in length. Um, going over underrated or overrated horror films. This week, we will be talking about our favorite famous horror movie franchises. This week, we've picked two of our favorites, and we're going to talk about why we enjoy them and kind of go back and forth. Would you say favorite, though? <laughs> like, our fa- personally, our favorites? Yeah, I don't know if I would... <laughs> I, don't I think... I- <laughs> I I chose specifically a one that I thought would be interesting, the, like one that wouldn't be as uh, you know. I'll be Indeed. honest here. People think are like, oh, we're gonna go with Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth. No, mm-hmm. that's not what we're doing. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> we're doing something that's still popular, but mm-hmm. I would say a little more cult. Uh, yeah, mine definitely is very culty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I wouldn't go as far as saying our my favorite. Maybe for me, I don't know about you, but uh, this one's up there for me. When uh, <laughs> how without saying how what movies it is, how so there's uh, nine of them, right? <laughs> there's nine. The one I, the one I chose. There's nine films. Um, the latest one being in 2011. And I have six in mine. <laughs> six in yours. All right. So I I win in that department, but maybe not <laughs> maybe not in creativity or cinematic value. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pete, without further ado, I'm gonna let you start us off here. What franchise did you choose for our listeners this week? Horror franchise. I chose uh, Child's Play franchise because mm, right it's on. a f- it is a franchise that actually creep me out a lot as a child because um you always hear about like chucky when i was a kid i don't know Mm -hmm. if it was like for you in your school but like no me too yeah yeah we always talked about it and then like i always you know thought like oh man that my toys are gonna come alive and kill me yeah they're gonna (laughs) kill me (laughs) you know it was great it was great being a little kid back then yeah well, that was around the hype at the time they were coming out, right? The first one was, like, l- late 80s, and then the rest of them in the 90s. Yeah, it was very of a time where I was, like, growing up, so I think it just made sense why, you know, it kind of attracted the attention from all, from literally all grade school <laughs> to, like, middle school. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the director of, of Child's Play was actually... Was it just the first one? Was Tom Holland, who, if you listen to our previous podcast, directed the original Fright Night? Yes, yeah, and he did a fine job with that one. <laughs> yeah. Did he do any of the sequels? Or just oh, the original? no. Uh, just this he first just attached one. himself to the sequel and got the hell out of there. Yeah, he did not have to do anything with the sequels. <laughs> but the writer did. <laughs> The writer did? Yeah, which is better than nothing. <laughs> True. True. So I think... Kinda, mm-hmm. uh, go ahead. No, no, you finish up. Go ahead. I was going to say that at least, like, I feel like it stays pretty consistent with, like, the realm of Chucky's, like, rules. Then it gets, like, kind of crazy uh, <laughs> between, like, Bride and Seed. <laughs> mm-hmm. They gotta up the ante. I mean, yeah. sequels you gotta. Keep They're it running out of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, well, with my franchise, I can definitely relate to uh, trying to go bigger and better as the series go on. 
Uh, At one point, do you th- did you find uh, your series to dwindle? Oh, geez. Um, there's nine, everybody, as I've said. Um, it has to be around number three, which before we, we started three or four, um, which is like the f- where they stopped going to the theaters. Uh, four was the last one to go into theaters, and then they started going straight to DVD. Uh, that's about the time. I would say four. Yeah, and this is a... Uh it's Hellraiser. I'm just, I was gonna. Oh just yeah. Gonna okay. Because <laughs> we we didn't give any con. We didn't give it. Give, uh, wow. Well, let me say that again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> let us hear. It, I please. didn't get. We didn't give any context to what we were talking about. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. My movie for everybody uh, would like to know. I chose the cult franchise, Hellraiser. Uh, and if, if you don't know what Hellraiser is, it's Pinhead. It's Pinhead series. Um. Yeah, the guy I, with yeah. all the pins in his head, you know. Yeah, it looks like he's got <laughs> ap- acupuncture in, in his head everywhere, and he's uh, him and the Cenobites. It's just a, it's a favorite of mine. It's not the best horror uh, franchise out there. I, I would still attest the first one's really good. The first one is great, and they start to fall from there. Um, but they're intriguing. I mean, there. It's my friend. I mean, I, I just like the the overall atmosphere of the, of the films. I mean, you can't you can't get, can't go wrong with Pinhead's one-liners. You never really can. They're great, um, especially in in Hell on Earth. There's a great one where he uh, he enters into a church. Um, Pete, do we have that clip by chance? Do, we do can we definitely have? find it. <laughs> they can find that clip. Great. Um, so we will we'll let you hear that clip when he uh, he confronts a priest. Um, my child, what's the matter? What on earth's the matter? I have to get him back to my apartment. Back to the window. But but they just keep coming. They just keep coming. Who keeps coming? The demons. The demons. Demons? Demons aren't real. They're parables, metaphors. Then what the fuck is that? Come on! Come on! But no, it's it's an interesting franchise. I even say it's one of my favorites to watch, even though it's grossed a uh, a total forty eight million in nine films um, <laughs> compared to, com- <laughs> compared to uh, Child's Play one hundred twenty six million over its six films. So, w- would you say though, even though Hel- let's say Hellraiser is, is a cult f- franchise and it's it hasn't summed a lot of money i mean it still is on par or would you would you label like pinhead in one of the top slasher type villains I, would you or would you just say no it's too obscure too cult um i think it is pretty like cult culty i guess we mm. as we would say um but i think he's memorable enough for people to like put him up there because i think mm-hmm. i mean you, you always hear at least i think from horror fans that <clears throat> it's a franchise that people could keep going back to yeah. as they made nine movies <laughs> they have made and there's talks of a remake uh, of the first one which Doug Bradley who plays Pinhead through the first eight films <laughs> uh, said he would be on board for doing a remake with Clive Barker who was the original writer and director of the first film and book that it's based off of but yeah um they are making another Chucky movie. <laughs> are they really? I had not heard about that. I mean, I feel like it's been... They've been talking about that for a while. Like, I remember seeing it, like, a while ago. Mm-hmm. Like, Chucky 7. But, like, there's... I don't think there's much said about it. That would be sweet if Tom Holland comes back, but I doubt it. <laughs> I know. It would be sweet. I mean, I think he'd make, it very, he'd make a great Chucky. It's just a sequel, right? Yeah. yeah, it'd be a sequel. Okay, just a sequel. I'm sure he would do an awesome job, but I don't think he's coming back. He hasn't made a movie in a while that I've seen. No. no. So maybe this is his big break. You're saying <laughs> this, the next child play movie has come back. 
is Tom Holland's come back to the horror genre. I'd be fine with that. So for Child's Play, I would say obviously the first one is the best. No mm. contest there. The mm-hmm. second one, I really enjoy, mainly because Chucky has some fucking phenomenal lines. Yeah. <laughs> The kills are very absurd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's funny because, like, I haven't seen the third one. I don't think... I've seen parts of it. But mm-hmm. it's just, like, the first three movies, it's just, like, Chucky is just unable to kill Andy. He he just can't do it. <laughs> and in Bride and Seed, which I haven't really seen, maybe bits and pieces back, like, a couple years ago, whenever the whole thing was that they kind of step away from Andy... Uh-huh. And like curse, you get a little a little post credit scene with Andy, which <laughs> yeah, it's very weird seeing him old <laughs> and he can't act at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. And with that being said, I found Curse I think Curse of Chucky was the first direct to video. <laughs> Um, that's the wait. Is that the latest one? The sixth one? Yeah, that's the latest one. Okay. And it was directed by the guy who wrote all the movies. Oh, he finally got his got a shot to direct it. Yeah, f- okay. at, at Child's Play. Uh, <laughs> he started directing them at Seed, so he directed Seed and Curse. And he's mm-hmm. he would be directing the next one. Okay. So he he must really enjoy working on him because I that's like it's his it's his baby his car- it's a bulk of his career is has yeah. been child's play mm-hmm. and I want to continue it until he can't pump any more money out of that cash cow coming from a, a hell Hellraiser fan over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what uh, what drew you to the Hellraiser franchise? I think honestly, what it what originally drew me to it before I saw any of them was uh, was Pinhead. I had just seen Pinhead, and I wanted to check out the movie. And I went to the first one. I saw the first one first. I didn't watch, like, three or four. And uh, the first one, it grabs you. I, I honestly contend that Hellraiser is a good first movie. Um, there, it's, there's just, like, with the score that's there, as well as the overlying themes, and, like, it just it makes you feel... Um, gloom and doom and dreadful um and so i wanted to continue and it just gets more bizarre and more and more insane as it goes on but the first one hooked me um no pun intended um pinhead's uh weapon of choice is chains and hooks um but it hooked me um and i kept on i've powered through most of them pete i still need to see seven and eight um but i've powered through and watched most of them my favorite one being the first um, and then probably, I don't know, Bloodlines was pretty good, but um, it got it was supposed to be three movies, uh, which is the fourth Hellraiser, by the way, Bloodlines. It was supposed to be like three different movies. They smashed into one because they were tired of putting them basically into theaters, so they wanted to finish it up. Um, <laughs> if you've ever seen like uh, Jason X, which is him in space, or the other movies where these slashers go into space, Bloodlines has that. Pinhead is in space at some point in that movie. Uh, <laughs> like Leprechaun in space. Does he go to hell as well in that movie? <laughs> um, usually, he uh, at one point or another winds up in hell, <laughs> and then will come from it um, into the mortal world, <laughs> um, or his dimensional but, plane, wherever the hell they're from. Uh, <laughs> uh, the puzzle box, yeah, the yeah. lament configuration that that they're not really trapped in, but they're summoned from when people are seeking sadistic sort of pleasures. But yeah, um, didn't am- amount to a lot of money. But it could be said that the the budgets for like most of these were uh, under a million dollars each. Like going, <laughs> like very little money went into these movies. Um, very low budget. You can kind of tell as as it wore on, the special effects were were weak, and even the last one was a lot of found footage, like handheld camera type really? stuff. Yeah, really? Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. The, the the ninth one that came out in 2011. Oh yeah. boy, that recent. <laughs> yeah, 2011 was the was the most recent one, and the the five through nine 
um, which were the direct videos were all retrofitted scripts that weren't originally meant to be Hellraiser movies. Um, they were other scripts that they basically fit into a Hellraiser plot. So they don't really follow the lore as much as the first four <laughs> of the uh, whole pinhead myth, if you will. But yeah, a um, little less serious stuff about the movie. Um, two cameos that I can point out from this film that I that I saw in the fourth movie is a young Adam Scott. Uh, any Parks and Rec fans um, <laughs> or Party Down fans? Um, party that, that Down. <laughs> party Down, yeah. As Ben Wyatt from Parks and Rec, he, he makes a, an appearance as well. I believe it's the, uh, the sixth one, the sixth Hellraiser that... Uh, it's Hell World. It's Hell World. It's that movie. Uh, Henry Cav- Henry Cavill. Is that how you pronounce it? Superman. Yeah, Henry Cavill. Cav- yeah, Cav- <laughs> he's in it. Uh, he he makes an appearance. So those two, Adam Scott and Henry Ca- Cavill. Cavill. You know who I'm talking about? Superman. <laughs> I'm talking about Superman. <laughs> Whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah. So those are the two notable appearances. But hell, I mean that that concludes my talking about Hellraiser. I can go on for hours, Pete. You know that. But uh, go out and see it, at least the first one, and then from there, judge if you want to sit through the rest. <laughs> Just do nothing all day and watch one through five, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd be okay with one through four. I mean, they're all right. <laughs> for people, for mine, all I got really got here is Catherine Heigl in uh-huh. Seed of Chucky, I believe she's in. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it's not Seed. It's Brian. Is it Brian? Yeah, it's Brian. Brian. Whatever, they're like fucking the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Um, let's see who else we have. Chris Sarandon, another person from Fright oh, Night. <laughs> yeah, well, pulled over. Tom Holland pulled him over. Well, he he liked it? him so much. Yeah. That's good. Well, do you got with any that, qu- questions for me about Child's Play? I'm trying to. What uh, what is what interests you about Child's Play? I need to see them again. I haven't seen all of them. I've seen, um, I I think I said earlier to you one and three Child's Play, and then Bride. I haven't seen, so I've seen half of the series. Um, I don't know. I mean. I asked what I really wanted to. Holland's not Holland's not on any of the other ones, and he was my main pole to him. I mean, no. I mean, if you had to recommend one of those three, I guess that I haven't seen. So two, Seed or Curse? Which one do I? Which one should I lean towards? Uh, two. <laughs> two. Stay yeah. in the Child's Play era. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I do enjoy Curse, where I think. I think I was just, like, really shocked that they were coming out with another, like, Chucky movie. And mm-hmm. I was just, like, I fucking rented it. Like, I rented it on DVD. <laughs> when it came out, made two of my friends watch it. I think they weren't too crazy about it, but I was like, man, this movie's so good. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome, guys. Because I was just, like, excited to see uh, Chucky again. And yeah. they kind of were, like, trying to make it, like, scary again. Kind of, like, I feel uh-huh. like that's, like, a very Nightmare on Elm Street formula. Where, like, uh, they kind of, like, go th- through the same process of, like, they start off scary. And then they go very campy very quickly. And yeah. become very funny because they just have, like, amazing lines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially yep. Freddy. More so Freddy than Chucky. But Chucky's got some good ones. Chucky, yeah. He... If I remember correctly, there's some good ones in there. Um, I don't know if he tops Freddy. Freddy, Freddy's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, we're uh, Nightmare ended with like uh, New Nightmare, which I think was like pretty cool, a good meta, mm-hmm. like back to scariness for that franchise. Like, Curse tried doing that same thing, but I think the problem was that it was like direct to video or direct to movie, whatever you want to call it. And but I kind of appreciated its attempt, and it like still kind of followed like the tropes of Chucky, 
that were already installed with the previous films, but I was just like, I was like, oh, it's nice seeing them kill some people again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Because like, there's just still something creepy about like a killer doll still, even though yeah. I, even though I've seen it several times, five other times, yeah, or yeah. in other films, but no, it's still unsettling. It's got that. Uh, Child's Play I mean, wh- actually does wh- it the best. The killer killer I dolls. Think so. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got dolls, but that's not as good. Mm-hmm. Just like a possessed doll. I mean, that's not a serial killer as well. That comes out and brutally murders people. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Because like the first one at least plays like a psychological thriller, at least a little mm-hmm. bit, where you're like questioning the kid's like uh, state of mind. Yeah. Which I think is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Pete, since uh, you threw the threw the question to me, if I had any concerns or questions about Child's Play, and uh, you answered most of the ones I had, do you have any anything you want to know about Hellraiser? I mean, so we can go on. Please, I I'd love to answer any of them. For since I've only seen the first one, so I'm obviously a bad fan of the Hellraiser <laughs> franchise. Should I just uh? Should I make the effort and watch all of them, or uh, um, should I do some kind of weird order? <laughs> oh, some weird order. Um, like a machete see. order or something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, knowing you, I think you get a good kick out of going through all nine. Or if, if, you, if you have to watch a out of order, go nine, af- go nine first, because you've seen the first one watch the last one they made because uh it only go up from there <laughs> yeah it's instant you need to stop <laughs> but that one was rough for me that last one yep what um what story did you find excluding the first one to be the most interesting take for hellraiser um there. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Bloodlines, just because, I mean, I think it would have worked better as three films, so it could have been like four, five, and six instead of what they did, but it was it was sort of giving, like, in, it gave a more encompassing idea of, like, what the puzzle box was, um, why it was there, um, how Pinhead became Pinhead or, like, the priest of the hell or whatever, um, but it was all, like, it was too fast, too much. Um, some scenes didn't seem like they connected at all to what was going on, but that one could, if if it was three movies and fleshed out more, was the best timeline. And I still think it's an interesting movie. And that's the space one. <laughs> and it also has space in it, everybody. <laughs> Something that I wanted to end on is that I, f- I found like a featurette that, uh, from the first Child's Play uh, by Tom Holland. Why are you why are you laughing yeah. at me? <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Pete. I'm just I'm just I'm interested. I'm really interested and intrigued. So I guess I got a smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he uh, has a pretty good interview there and I wanted to share with you guys, so I'll play the clip for you guys. Ooh, I'd love to hear. Let's go. Take me away. Well the other thing you see is I as I deconstruct the film is that probably I don't know if it was half, but a lot of the shots are, are a little person named Ed Gale. Okay. Because yeah. I couldn't get the doll to work. So what that is, is that is a, that is a combination of shots with the doll uh, and the effects done by Kevin Yeager and the little person dressed up in the doll suit named Ed Gale, who did a brilliant job. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed, wherever you are. The, and I built oversized sets to trick the eye. And then in other, other, other times, I, I was able to shoot down like on a rug or on the floor, and you didn't have a sense that, that, that Ed was bigger than the actual doll. And it worked visually, but I, when I was taking a look at that film again, I'd forgotten. I mean, I mean, my God, so many of those shots of the little person. And that's what sells it, because mm-hmm. the doll couldn't move. Even with 12 puppeteers, the doll couldn't move, couldn't hold a knife, didn't have anything kinetic about it. And I think they've improved now. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, it was the little person that saved us. 
And with that, um, I've talked as much as I feel like I can without boring everybody about Hellraiser. Um, and, and, and not trying to go too long with our mini episode. Um, but that will wrap it up for this week. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, please let us know what you think um, one of your favorite franchises are or just an interesting horror franchise on our forum and in the discussion board when we put this up. And don't forget to check out the website. Uh, normally we'll, we'll have our blog posts up um, as, as often as we can. And uh, ch- uh, keep, a, keep an eye out for any contests that we'll have soon for artwork or anything. Uh, we'll be giving away prizes. Uh, for any lucky fans out there who uh, really want to join in and be a part of It Records. And follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We'll have those all up and running and keeping you up to date on what's going on with Pete and our lives and with It Records. Oh, and uh, sorry, one more thing. Next week's uh, full episode will be the movie Cat People by Val Luton. Uh, we're actually going sit, to sit down and watch that one. Beautiful, beautiful outro there, man. I thanks. It. I really, I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, I just try to. It's just like a word vomit. I just kind of just it just flows through me, man. At, at this point, it's just uh, it's just memory. I know. I, I just whatever whatever sticks. I just throw it out there. Muscle memory. <laughs> it's muscle memory. Yeah, from my mouth. Muscle memory. With that, um, I hope to see you all next week. Until next time. I remain in the shadows. Goodbye. <laughs>